is so wizard Andy. Oh, ladies, let's get this party started. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastair. You are listening to So Wizard. You're so thinking, you're so people gonna die? The only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. There'll be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time. For episode number 226 of the So Wizard podcast, I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Ho, 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 motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and the expert, Mr. Marquis, Markellis Reagans. Man, I don't care what anyone says, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, damn it. Fight me. <laughs> it is. It really is. You are listening to So Wizard Podcast. Three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly. This week, we're going to talk some nerdy news, and then we're going to jump right into a review of the newest movie on Netflix starring Kurt Russell as Santa Claus, The Christmas Chronicles. Before we get into that, how's everybody doing? Aubrey, we missed you last week. What's going on? Um, Three weeks later, I am still sick. <laughs> and tired. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, some steroids to, just to help me, like, take some of the swelling out of my body because it's just horrible. And retail is retail. And uh, Black Friday, Black Friday actually wasn't too bad. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we got really good reviews on the organization of our Black Friday. And I think part of that is just, you know, it's not my first rodeo with GameStop and Black Friday. So. No. Uh, we had a lot of people that were super happy about how we handled everything. So that that was probably the most positive thing. That's awesome. I knew you could do it. I, yeah. I have and in, in a time of crisis, I am here. That's right. All, all roided up <laughs> and ready <Yeah>. to go. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was like really sick on Black Friday too. And I think some people might have just felt bad for me because I was just pouring sweat from the fever. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and I worked 11 hours that day. So I was running all throughout the store and just kept shredding off different layers of clothing. <laughs> just <laughs> trying not to die. Oh, uh, well, you're, you're feeling better now, though, right? No. Damn. <laughs> I know. I know. Three weeks later and I'm still sick. It never ends. Well, at least you're here giving up your time <laughs> instead of resting <laughs> to am. entertain the masses. So I wouldn't good. have it any other way. We're super glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Mark Ellis, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, didn't really have that big of an exciting week. Oh, actually, I take that back. I did something that I haven't done in, in a long, long time. I actually used my movie pass. I know. <laughs> movie Pass makes it incredibly fucking difficult to watch any movies now. Like it's the the amount of hoops that you have to jump jump through in order to just get a ticket. It's fucking ridiculous. So finishing up with Movie Pass, I'm gonna be kicking it to the curb. But I wanted to milk it for all I could during these last like couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing, trying to use up the the remaining movies that I can. I think I got like one more left. Uh oh. What did you go see? I saw Widows and I saw um, something else. Something so good you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the end of the year, so I'm trying to like pack everything in. I'm trying to watch like as many movies as I can. And they start to run into each other, especially when you start feeding in like Netflix movies and Patreon movies. It's it's a lot. But I did go see Widows and I fuck. What the fuck was the other one? It was. Uh, Oh, it was uh, Instant Family <laughs> with uh, Mark Wahlberg and uh, the girl that's going to be Dora the Explorer, who was also in Transformers. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, don't think I would want to see either of those movies even for free. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll let you on a little secret. Instant Family, it's really fucking good. It's way better than it has any right to be. Widows, not so much. I was a little disappointed with it. I'm not going to lie. 
But uh, yeah, if you want to see a family movie that's PG-13, that pushes PG-13 as far as it can go and still be funny and still prove that Marky Mark can actually act, uh, go check out Instant Family. It's actually a really good flick. Does he ask at all at any point in the movie, what do you guys think happened to the bees? <laughs> um, nope, but th- there's a couple of scenes that are really close to that. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Joey? Uh, I'm fine. I'm just really tired. I literally woke up uh, five minutes before we started recording. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. And turned my computer on and sat down. So, um, yeah, I'm just exhausted. So I've been killing myself working two jobs, trying to get the money together to get Colin a Nintendo Switch for Christmas. And it's not going to happen. So, Oh, why? Just not just because not of the way I get paid every two weeks yeah. for my second job. So I'm just not going to have enough by Christmas time. So gotcha. I went um, out today and bought him a, a Nintendo classic. So, Oh, nice. Nice. So we'll have a NES classic and a SNES classic. So that'll be his Christmas present and he'll just have to deal with it. Get him one of those cardboard kits, like uh, the star Wars figures back in the seventies. Let's <laughs> open up the box and it's like, keep this box. And someday you'll have a, a game to fit inside of it instead of the figures. Yeah. In four years, your parents can afford a <laughs> Nintendo switch. Here That's you go. <laughs> That's but other than that, I've just been laying around, and I I'm been uh, catching up on The Walking Dead on Netflix. That's oh, okay, all right. Like on like the older seasons. Uh, well, I stopped watching three episodes in a season eight. Okay, and I started working uh, every other Sunday night during that time too. So it was really hard to catch up. And usually, me and Jen sit down and watch together. But obviously, I wasn't home because I was working, so I wasn't watching it. But uh, now I am, they changed my schedule again, so I don't work Sundays. So I'm like, crap, uh, I'm a season and a half behind, so I can't just sit down and watch it with Jenna out of nowhere. So I started catching up on season eight, and I finished that today. That's cool. I had some really cool, well, not cool, but there was something I wanted to mention about Walking Dead, but it's kind of a spoiler. So since you're watching it, I won't, I won't talk about it. But something really cool happened last week um, oh. off the show. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Oh, well, it was just fun. It was a lot better than I expected after the terrible first three episodes. Yeah. And uh, it was probably because I could watch like two or three at a time and not have to wait a week in between. Right. It was just funny. I wasn't expecting a uh, former guest of the show, Joshua Mickle, to be in it as much as he was, <laughs> yeah. which was great. It was good because uh, every time he was on, I was like, that guy was on our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he was in our show a lot. Yeah, it was great. So oh, good times. Uh, check it out. So that's that. And let's move on to Markellis telling you where you can find more So Wizard Podcasts. All right, so everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find new episodes every week. You'll also find some movie reviews from yours truly. You'll find some Netflix and Amazon streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Wallyhawk. Uh, you also find our merchandise there where you can purchase some of our t-shirts. Look good while you're representing the show. Uh, another great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping right through the link that we keep on the website. Click on that big A, do your holiday shopping, or do all your shopping for that matter. Uh, receive your products, and that way you'll be helping out our show. Uh, you can also find our social media links there. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. You can also find us on a Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone. We're on Podbean, we're on Google Play Music, and you can also stream us through Spotify. Uh, you can also support our show through our Patreon account, patreon.com backslash Podcast. Support the show and receive some exclusive extra content. Shout out to all of our fellow podcast groups and friends. Uh, this week's K-pop jam, which is probably going to be the last K-pop jam. This is my favorite group in the world right now, Red Velvet. And this is called Butterflies. Back to you, Joey. What did you say? Are you kidding me? What? Huh. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I guess we uh, we've got some news to talk about, Mark. So let's do this. Let's let's get some news. I'm dying to hear Aubrey's takes on things since we haven't talked to her for a week. Yo, pump it up. It's time for the news. Yo, we getting ready to bring you the news, boy. 
All right, so this week in nerdy news, we have a little bit of sad news. Uh, if you are a fan of the Marvel Netflix shows, they already canceled Luke Cage. <laughs> they already canceled Iron Fist. And now it looks like Daredevil is canceled. Even though Daredevil season three was absolutely amazing, for some reason, Netflix and Marvel was like, nope, no season four. D Daredevil is out of here. Breaking the hearts of many, many nerds all around the world. So so let's go around the room and see what you guys think of this. Uh, let's start with Aubrey. How do you feel about Daredevil going bye, bye, bye? It doesn't really bother me because I haven't watched much of it. What? Did you watch season? You finished season one, though, right? I don't remember if I finished season one. It was so long ago. I watched it when it first came out, and then I just stopped watching it. Okay. All right. Jessica Jones was your show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I was at. That's what I thought. I know it's coming up next, too. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to cancel it next. Well, it hurts me, but, I mean, look at the trend. At least they already filmed the next season of it, so at least you know it's in a can. Yeah, yeah, that's the good part. All right, Joey, what about you, dude? How do you feel about Daredevil being canceled? Um, it's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished season three yet, but it was really, really good so far, and the first two seasons were awesome. So it's definitely not because of quality, um, right? Allegedly, it's not even because of viewership it, it's pretty much what i had said a few weeks ago <laughs> they're all set spending money to be an advertisement for someone else's streaming service so mm -hmm. how far are <sighs> you into season three uh i'm still like two episodes <laughs> what <laughs> oh my god i'm working on it i got a lot of stuff to watch man put walking dead down and finish daredevil man yeah out of here with that oh boy yeah, I'm, I'm going to catch up. But yeah, so far it's so good. And the other two seasons were awesome. So uh, I'm sad. Hopefully, you know, it won't be on Disney Plus, but maybe they can bring it to Hulu. Yeah. Disney's got to open that wallet, though, because Netflix has the uh, this like unending streaming rights to everything that they've released. Because <laughs> they co-produced that and they paid for like for making it so it's not like they can just take it all and put it on hulu now that's um, true that's true so if you are waiting to watch like all the other shows if you haven't gotten around to watching seasons one through three of daredevil they'll be on netflix probably forever so right at least they'll it's have one anywhere it's just not gonna continue yeah um but yeah, I, I, I do uh, offer to console Karen Page <laughs> if she needs if she needs a hug or anything I'm right there I was just about to say that. Where am I going to get my Karen Page fix now? From comic books? Come on now. Uh, you can follow her on Instagram. That's the best <laughs> I got. You can go, I'll go see uh, Panic Room or whatever that movie is that she's going to be in. <laughs> Wait, no. What is the name of that? Puzzle Room or? No, Escape Room. Escape Room. That's it. Panic Room's Jodie Foster. I think you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> I want the Panic Escape Room starring Tommy Wiseau, Jodie Foster, and uh, Karen Page. All together. And, uh, and Brie Larson. And what's her name? Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. And Brie Larson all together. It's the Room <laughs> Cinematic Universe. All right. So we got a lot, a little bit more uh, Netflix news. So Daredevil's out of here. But uh, one show that is doing well that they announced that is coming back for season two is Sabrina. Chilling Adventures yes. of Sabrina. Uh, not only are we getting a Christmas special in the next like couple of weeks, but we are getting season two starting in April. Now, I have not finished Sabrina. I'm still working my way through it when I get a chance. Uh, but uh, season the fact that they already announced season two and it's coming out so soon, like in you know five months, means that they have a lot of faith in it. Joey, how do you feel about Sabrina coming back for season two? Uh, I'm super excited. I guess I should probably finish season one, huh? How, how far are you into season one? Uh, one episode. No, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I haven't watched more of it since we watched it. <laughs> I want to. I really, really, really liked it, um, and I, 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 I'm going to watch it. It's just it's time. Mm -hmm. This time of year is brutal, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I don't work in like actual retail, but you know where I work is still super busy. And those few weeks leading up to Thanksgiving were like hell on earth. And I've been working a lot of hours at my second job, and we're gearing up for Christmas, which is going to be hell on earth. So 
you know, in January, I'll sit down and watch some more TV, I guess. But I still have to finish Voltron season seven and season eight's coming out soon. And I got to finish The Walking Dead and I got to finish Daredevil and then I got to watch Sabrina. So there's a lot of stuff on my plate, but I'm definitely going to watch it. I really liked it a lot. What I what I saw and I'm glad there's going to be more. So people keep watching so there can be more and more and we won't be in a daredevil situation <laughs> well you got until april so you got time you got some time okay good good aubrey you like the first episode of sabrina are you psyched that there's going to be a season two you know i actually finished the entire first season oh hold and, uh, on hold on that deserves a <laughs> <laughs> i did i did i actually finished something um, I don't really like the way that the first season ended i think it's kind of stupid oh really is it like a cliffhanger not really. It, I just feel like it's lame. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I hope like season two rectifies that because it just feels really lame. Wow. There you go. Now I'm on board. Now I definitely want to watch the rest of season one. Arby's ahead of us in something. I know. How is this possible? <laughs> We're on Earth 2 right now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Joey, you already said Voltron season eight is starting. Uh, as you listen to this episode, it's probably on there right now. So, oh, uh, really? Yeah. It's starting soon. Uh, I'm still on season two, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, and then in other news that somehow uh, people kind of lost their shit over a little bit, which surprised me because I didn't think anyone cared about this show. Uh, Netflix announced that they're making a live action Cowboy Bebop TV show. Now, I know that I'm not like a super expert on anime TV shows. There's a handful that I really, really like. Um, but out of all, out of everything that I've watched since, um, not including like Speed Racer or Battle of the Planets, out of everything that I've watched, Cowboy Bebop is definitely the favorite. It's my favorite thing ever. I would totally recommend everyone watch the anime if you haven't seen it already. The live action TV show, I think, is an amazing idea. Uh, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, oh, they're, they're not going to be able to replicate the TV show or do what they want uh, or, you know, make it as exciting or as, as cool as it as the original anime. And I get that. They are not going to be able to do that. Uh, but the thing that I love about the fact that Netflix is doing this is because I love these characters. I love Spike. I love um, Ed. I love the little dog. Everyone needs to know who these characters are. Everyone needs to, to get introduced to these characters. And if they're not going to watch the anime, which a majority of people are not, then at least this is a good window to do it. Um, so I'm psyched for this. Let's go around the room. Aubrey, how do you feel about Cowboy Bebop being made into a live action TV show? I'm pretty excited. I hope that they do it right. And I hope that they do it justice. Um, I really liked Cowboy Bebop when it was on. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see how it goes. I really hope that they do do it well. Oh, in a track record of uh, anime to live action. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not good. But I'm, I'm hoping this will be one that uh that people will enjoy without having to watch the anime all right joey what about you i'm almost afraid to ask uh anime why don't you understand that anime belongs in the trash (laughs) Uh, i've never watched cowboy bebop i i know my my brother-in-law like loves cowboy bebop he's obsessed with it i'm interested to see what his take on this will be yeah um I, they've been trying to do this for years, though. I remember Keanu Reeves was going to be the guy in the blue suit. Yep. Yeah. It was forever. Spike. Yep. Yep. And then it was going to be James Franco for a while. And I know a lot of cosplayers I follow on Instagram have cosplayed. There's a girl with purple hair. Yeah. <laughs> a girl with purple Faye. hair in anime. <laughs> the, the, you, you have to know Man Faye. I don't know anything about this stuff, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge internet phenomenon where it, it, this dude dressed up like Faye from Cowboy Bebop. And she's got big, huge boobs. Oh, I didn't uh, know about this dude. What? Uh, what? How does uh, nobody know about Man Faye? I did a paper on Man Faye. <laughs> what'd you in get? High what'd school. what'd was, you get for um, a grade? We had to do. What the hell was the paper well, on? Well, Aubrey, you, you said the magic word about nobody follows this cosplayer. <laughs> it's a guy. <laughs> well, they. <laughs> I did a paper on him in high school. It was like we had to write a paper on an inspirational person, so I wrote it about Man <laughs> And he inspired you how exactly? I don't I was a dick in high school. I don't know. <laughs> I also wrote a paper we had to write a, a 
woman's essay on a woman that's inspired us in our entire life. And I wrote about myself. Nice. (laughs) I am awesome. The end. Yep. Awesome. That was pretty much it. (laughs) So nobody makes decisions for myself except for myself. Well, Joey, I wouldn't subject you to watch 25 episodes, I think, 24 episodes in a movie of Cowboy Bebop, even though it is probably the best anime I've ever seen in my life. But you should definitely watch the show because the characters are really cool. And um, I think if you watch the show and if you're interested in the characters, then maybe go back and check out the anime. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll check out the show, no doubt, when it comes out. But, uh, you know, I know people are poo-pooing it a lot, especially after the Death Note movie. Yeah. Yeah. And those people have, they have a right to be angry that Netflix is going to be doing this. I, I get it. I totally get it. I was the person that was always like, they better not touch Cowboy Bebop. They better not fuck it up because it's perfect the way it is. And it is perfect. But then you come across people like Montego on, on uh, Fans of Patrol who won't watch it at all. And I'm like, dude, this show is, these characters are so cool. This situation is so cool. He would be, I think he would like it. I really Why won't he watch it? Just because it's animated? Uh, probably. Probably. Uh, I know he hadn't seen it before, and I know it was a, it was tough to try to... I think when they were talking about it before, I was trying to get him to watch it. But a 10-episode Netflix show, then yes, I think that's a, a that's a good way to go. You know, get get people like that, get people like Montego into the show. Um, because it is an, it's an amazing anime. It really is like... It's fucking amazing. I love it. All right. So, uh, in reboot sequel... Reboot-quel? Reboot-quel news. We're getting a new Candyman. Uh, everything that's old is new again. Uh, this one is going to be written and produced by Jordan Peele, which uh, instantly uh, ups its cred. Uh, Jordan Peele proved that he knows horror situations and is an excellent writer from the Get Out movie. Uh, Candyman, uh, I vaguely remember the first one. I don't remember any of the sequels, but I do remember walking out of a party at Dragon Con once and uh, Tony Todd was walking in. So I thought that was kind of scary. Uh, but yeah, I'll check it out because I like Jordan Peele. Uh, Aubrey, how do you feel about a Candyman sequel slash reboot coming? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen the first one. Yeah, it's a, it is a little bit before your time, isn't it? It's not. Oh, that's right. It's a horror movie, too. Yeah, you can't watch that. We're taking you off the table for a Candyman. Okay, cool beans. Joey. That's exciting for me. <laughs> Joey, what about you, dude? <laughs> uh, I remember watching it. I, I think I rented it. came out in 1992. So, yeah, that would have been before I was dating my wife. So I would have watched it by myself out of boredom, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a sad, sad statement of my life. Um, yeah, I, I remember watching it. I remember liking it. I barely remember anything about it. I know Tony Todd was awesome in it. And they made two really bad sequels. Mm-hmm, supposedly. The jury's still out on that. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen either of the sequels? Nope. I saw the first one, and that's the only one I really remember. And I saw it like late at night, and I was pretty drunk. It was the 90s. Oh. <laughs> it's not bad. It's it's not bad for what it is, For what, which sounds like damning praise. <laughs> but um, for a like, B-grade, low-budget horror movie, it's good. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not Lawrence of Arabia, but it gets the job done. So we'll see. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of cool concepts there. Um, I really hope Tony Todd can be in it and not just as a cameo. He'd be great to just come back as Candyman. But I don't think that's going to happen. But no. you know how they make these movies nowadays? They'll you know throw $3 million at it and make about $35 million and everyone will be happy. So Wasn't this, wasn't it like a, it's a Clive Barker joint, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the yeah. first one was based on a short story. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's cool. That's cool. All right, so so then in uh, DC Cinematic Universe news. Oh no! Kind of. Are you saying we have to go back? We have to go back. It looks like we are going to be getting a Blue Beetle movie. Uh, Blue Beetle is uh, is gone through a bunch of different, um, I guess, people who've owned the suit. Uh, I got familiar with him from the uh, episode of Smallville that he was in, because they were talking about doing a Blue Beetle TV show. Uh, And that was kind of like the backdoor pilot that didn't quite work. Uh, And he was also pretty cool on the Young Justice cartoon. Uh, So a Latino superhero, teenage superhero in a big budget DC comic book movie. I'm I'm down. I'm down for that. I think it's a cool idea. Joey, what do you know about Blue Beetle? Uh, I like Blue Beetle. I like this iteration of Blue Beetle. Um, I'm just nervous about anything that involves a DC movie at yeah. this point. So 
it's hard to get excited, to be quite honest with you. Like, they can't even get their main characters right. So when they start announcing B and C grade character movies, it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> but at least he's not going to be on the Titans TV show. So he won't be running around slaughtering people wholesale. <laughs> Or stumbling around with amnesia in a fur coat. So I, I'll check it out. I'm excited to see it if it's good. I just, I'd like to see them like get a director or somebody that can make like a fun movie. This would be great along the same lines as Shazam. Maybe right. a little less goofy, but like that, like PG 13 y, but not PG 13 like Batman versus Superman PG 13, where it's just like dour and like depressing right this could be a really cool fun movie for teenagers and a little bit younger so yeah yeah i think it would be a really cool angle of represent representation for like a young latino superhero on a big budget movie i think that'd be awesome uh aubrey what about you how do you feel about blue beetle coming to the big screen i don't really know much about blue beetle honestly except for that it's noah's father's like favorite superhero but oh, i almost well <laughs> yeah i almost feel like that's just because it's something obscure and he's a hipster huh just kidding not really um <laughs> he was down with aubrey before it was cool to send her dick pics on the yeah. internet. Well, that's how yeah. hipster he was <laughs> yep so um yeah that, that's pretty much the only thing i know too much about blue beetle i just know a little bit in passing, but nothing too much. So it doesn't it doesn't really affect me much. No, I won't be too worried about it until they announce the title Blue Beetle and the incredibly internal spotlight of the Eternal Sunshine Mine or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the emancipation of Harley Quinn v. Blue Beetle oh, God. slash Joker Suicide Squad. <laughs> the emancipation of <laughs> Lex Luthor and boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll bring that back. Um, okay, and then in Marvel movie news, uh, looks like we are getting a Shang-Chi movie. Uh, it was recently announced that they're going to be making a movie based on the Marvel character that came out in the 70s right at the height of a Bruce Lee fandom uh, called Shang-Chi, which uh, I guess is a big deal. I don't remember this at all. The only time this name came up in my uh, area is when people are talking about Iron Fist. So I have no idea who this character is or what he's about. Um, I think it's cool that they're going to do a uh, uh, Asian superhero that's going to be uh, front and center with an Asian filmmaker and an Asian writer behind it. So I think that's kind of cool. Aubrey, how do you feel about a Shang-Chi movie? I don't even know what this is. <laughs> yeah, barely. Barely. Yeah. Um, what are Shang-Chi? What is Shang-Chi? What are, what, where? Let's go to our comic book expert, Joey. Joey. <laughs> Shang-Chi is the master of Kung Fu, which he's basically a uh, Bruce Lee ripoff. <laughs> but he is the greatest Kung Fu slash martial artist in the entire Marvel Universe. Wow. Even better than Iron Fist? Yes. Yes. He doesn't have any superpowers at all. Just that what? he is a badass fighter. All right. Is he a millionaire playboy? No. Wow. He's just a dude that wants to fight. And his <laughs> in the comics, his father was Fu Manchu. Okay. But they don't have the rights to that, so they'll probably it's changed since then to it like just it's basically Fu Manchu but not called Fu Manchu. Right, right. But uh so they'll probably not have that be part of his origin. But dude, I am fucking pumped for this. Holy cow. Yeah, I think it'd I, be cool to see them do like a martial arts movie after doing Iron Fist. Kind of like, okay, this is what we really meant to do. It's not often it would, involving like movies being made that we say, thank you, China. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Usually we're cursing China because of, you know, pollution or, you know, communism or Transformers sequels. But <laughs> <laughs> instead we are saying thank you because there's no way that this gets made. <laughs> <laughs> them saying like looking at the box office receipts for stuff over in china and being like yes yes mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly that's i but, didn't think of that dude that's amazing well yeah well i mean he'd probably be on netflix or something if not so or a side character in an iron fist season three yep <laughs> like, exactly but this is gonna be amazing i'm really fingers crossed i really want them to hire i know they're gonna be like oh it has to be an asian director just, i don't care who the director is as long as they can shoot action scenes like get me someone that can shoot unbelievable action scenes yeah 
and and that's all that matters. Like I don't care who the director is. I don't want shaky cam or any of that nonsense. Like I want this to be like the raid on steroids, <laughs> <laughs> which it should be because that's what the home that's the whole crux of the movie. You can't cover this up with. It's not like Captain Mar- like Brie Larson isn't a badass like fighter, but. You know, she has a cool story and flies around and shoots laser beams and stuff like that's not happening in this movie. So the, it lives and dies on the fights. So got to make the fights awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think having a few seasons of Iron Fist behind them, they kind of look at it and be like, all right, this is kind of what we don't want to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it kind of gives them a map of how they want to do it. And with the success of uh, Black Panther giving a, a you know, black superhero to a black filmmaker and black writer and reaping the benefits of that. Uh, I can see why they're just like, yeah, we're going to just go all Asian on this one uh, just to, you know, and make sure that, you know, not just give them the job because they're Asian, but give it to like some of the best uh, people for the job. Ryan Cooler is, he did an amazing job with black Panther. Oh, of course. he did. Uh, it was awesome. Like, stunning, stunning. So that was like the right move on Marvel's part. They didn't just give it to him because he's black. He's an amazing filmmaker, and he brought a, he brought a lot of his sensibility to it. The movie's amazing, uh, so they're, I think they're looking for the same thing for this one. They're looking for that crazy rich Asians money. That's exactly. Don't hire John Chu, please. <laughs> Why? I like him. He did a great job with with Crazy Rich Asians. Good for him. Um, and I'm really psyched that he's doing In the Heights, which is another musical. But he did Jim and the Holograms, and he thought that movie was going to be amazing, and it was trash. <laughs> pure trash so you're just telling me kesha isn't going to show up in the after credit scene of master of kung fu <laughs> no that's not gonna happen okay she, her cameo in crazy rich asians was pretty good though i'll give her that I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding i'm totally kidding i didn't see that so i was ready to just believe you that it happened <laughs> all right okay so then and then uh in really quick uh marvel news even though we haven't seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it's not out yet, but it's coming out in a couple of weeks. They have already announced the sequels, or a sequel and a spinoff. A sequel to the movie and a spinoff starring all of the female characters. Uh, which is, you know, they're kind of jumping a gun a little bit. The spider hype is real. But the thing that I liked about this is the guy that's going to be doing the sequel is Joaquin DeSantos, uh, who did a lot of work on uh, Legend of Korra and Avatar, a lot of the DC animated movies, and he's also the executive producer of Voltron, and the woman that's doing the the Spider female movies, Lauren Montgomery, the other executive producer of Voltron. So the the people who are behind Voltron are doing a Spider Man movie sequels. Is basically what I'm getting at. I think this is amazing. I've loved the work for years. I'm psyched for Spider Man. I'm psyched for these sequels. What do you guys think of uh, these filmmakers doing these movies, Aubrey? It's okay. It's cool. We'll see. All right, Joey. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see, <laughs> as Aubrey said. But uh, the buzz on Into the Spider Verse is out of control. So I, I guess that bodes even more well for the movie. I'm excited to see it in a couple weeks here because people are saying it's the best animated movie of the year. It's the best superhero movie of nah, the year. I don't know about that. I don't know either. But uh, you know, people are like really really praising this movie and not just like you know when batman versus superman came out and a bunch of people said it was amazing <laughs> like like actual critics like legitimate critics not right. not youtubers or podcasters <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah people are like out of their minds for this so if they're onto something and they have something really cool i, I want to see a sequel you know Dude, i thought you would be psyched because you love voltron so much the vote the people behind voltron are doing the spider-man movies I know. I love Voltron, but I don't want them to like stop working on Voltron because I want a vehicle <laughs> Voltron show after this. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> they they have to work on Voltron for the rest of their lives. <laughs> if I was the king of the world, I'd bang my gavel down and be like, more Voltron. <laughs> Send it back to the dungeon to make more. Oh, I'm psyched. The, both of these uh, directors have done amazing DC animated movies uh, besides working on uh, Avatar and Legend of Korra. Uh, so they're names that are, they were familiar to me before they got the Voltron gig. So I'm psyched for it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That is it for this week's nerdy news. All right. Well, now we're going to get into a little bit of reviewing a movie that came out on Netflix, I think a week or so ago. Was that right? I don't know. I've been about hearing about it. About a week ago. 
<laughs> I've been hearing about it all week, so uh, probably. Right. Uh, and this movie is called The Christmas Chronicle. Riddick, The so, Christmas Chronicle. And Santa Chronicles, Christmas yeah. Chronicles. The Chronicles of Riddick, starring Santa Claus. Um, and it, the reason I want to check it out is because it stars Kurt Russell as Santa Claus. And I love Kurt Russell. And I wanted to watch this movie, and I needed an excuse because nobody else wanted to watch it. <laughs> so, we decided to review it for the podcast so we'll go into a non-spoiler impressions and then we'll jump into spoilers and talk about it so what did you think of the movie aubrey i'm not entirely sure how we came to this place of us watching this movie <laughs> i just told you how we came to it it's kurt russell in it it just is so odd <laughs> but besides that how did you like the movie i didn't I thought it was stupid. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, Mark Ellis. Yeah, there was a part of me that I had to remember what type of movie this was. Uh, you kind of have to treat it like a like a horror movie. You know, you can't use your brain too much. Just kind of kick back and enjoy it. Uh, with that aspect, I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was a really fun Christmas movie. I thought it worked. <laughs> okay, good. Because uh, I fucking loved this movie. <laughs> of course you did. I loved it. Loved it. It was great. I fucking loved it. I mean, it's not great. It, it's good. But I really liked it a lot. We had just been... To, was it last week? We were just talking about this. That they don't really make these mid-budget, low-budget like family movies anymore. Yeah, yeah. And here we are. They finally <laughs> made one. It's not a Disney movie. It's not a remake of something. It's not a sequel to something. It's just an original, random mid-budget family movie i love it Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's great (laughs) so there's not really any way to talk about this without spoiling stuff so let's just get at it with spoilers spoiler alert i had seen the future and i had to prevent it (laughs) oh chris chan (laughs) all right uh i don't even know where to start (laughs) So right away, this movie takes place in uh, Massachusetts, where we're from. So that, well, Aubrey's not in Massachusetts anymore, but you're from. But I'm from there. Yeah. That's right. And I knew something was up because in one of the Christmases, they're showing uh, this family like videotapes. Right. uh, Their Christmas every year. Did people even still have camcorders in 2006? Yeah, the dad dad was old school. So uh, that's, that's the way he rolled. Where, okay. where they got blank cassettes from that uh, that's a whole another question <laughs> like, like i said you got to turn your radio brain off. shack didn't go out of business for a couple more years <laughs> right right he in was massachusetts like, at least <laughs> he was that old guy like coming in to buy like watch batteries and light bulbs at radio shack all right so they get a uh so they're video recording themselves every christmas so it's showing the kids grow up and one of the one of the Christmases, the kid had a Pats jersey on. So right away, I was just like, this movie rules. <laughs> Five stars right off the bat. But it was because later on in the movie, when they're in Chicago, there's a Chicago Bears flag in the background at the bar. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know if they had a deal with the NFL or something, or they were just like, that's how they were delineating where they were. Yeah. Like whoever made the sets was like, okay, they were in Massachusetts. Here's a Patriots flag. Okay, we're in Chicago. Here's a Bears flag. Like, I guess that was just how they determined where they were well, geographically. The, the other option is let's actually go to Chicago and film this Christmas movie. No. Yeah, exactly. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they're videotaping. And then, like, this, like, the, the beginning of the movie, I was, like, a little concerned because it was, like, kind of dark. Like, didn't their dad died? Yeah. And then they don't celebrate Christmas anymore? Like, what happened? <laughs> Well, the mom is busy being a single parent, I think. So there's not as much put into it. Right. And the young kid is able to go off and do whatever he wants to because he doesn't have that father figure. And the young girl is the only one that's still trying to keep everything together and keep uh, everything positive. Right. So she is still all into Christmas and believing in Santa. So she's going to record a videotape. Asking him for uh, her Christmas presents. Yeah, was that is, what it was? It was a skateboard. A skateboard, right? And she almost swears when she's recording it. <laughs> almost. That's how you can know she's from Massachusetts. That's right. That's right. And then uh, she, her brother, and her he 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 goes. He's going to go out with his friends, but he won't take her. So she sneaks after him and act, and records him with this camera, which is like 
omnipresent through the entire film is this video camera. Um, she records him stealing a car. <laughs> stealing a car. Like that was that was pretty uh, that was pretty big. You know? Seriously, I mean, I understand this is like a nice, sweet family movie, and you know, by the time you get spoiler, by the time you get to the end of it, you know, you have all of the feels or whatever. But this kid is a he he stole totally just stole a car. It's kind of a dick move. I don't care where you're from. No, I'm on my own. We're we're a bunch of car stealers in this in this podcast. I I, I was sorry, I was yawning. Um, at least out near Boston. <laughs> Uh, that was that seemed crazy. I thought maybe they'd be like drinking or something a little less hardcore, but no, they just steal in a car right in the middle of town, right in the middle of Lowell, Massachusetts. Yeah, and they got away with it. He didn't get arrested. He didn't learn a lesson. No, nope. <laughs> he, he stole a car with his friends and came home before midnight or whatever. What did they do with the car? Right, they killed people. <laughs> they drove that shit into the harbor or something. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> But she is all sad and rewatching videos of Christmas's past. And what does she see in the in the video, Aubrey? Santa. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the Blair Witch. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever have they ever shown what the Blair Witch looks like? They showed something. Was it in Blair Witch Two Book of Shadows? No, no, it was in Blair Witch. <laughs> the Blair Witch. The first one. No, 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 the new one. Oh. The one that used to be called The Woods. Oh, Blair Witch 3, The Blair Witch. The bl- yeah, exactly. The, okay. bl- the, the Blair and the Witchiest. That's it. B-L-A-3-R. <laughs> two Blair, two Witch. That's right. <laughs> three Blair, three Furious. All right. Sorry, we got on a tangent there. So she sees Santa Claus in the video that they have leaving a present under their tree. So then... She convinces her brother to stay up with her so they can videotape Santa Claus dropping off their presents. Yeah, and he agrees for some reason. I thought for sure him, him being a badass car thief, he's like, I'm going to stay up all night and videotape Santa Claus? Get the fuck out of here. Well, she offers to give him the tape of him uh, stealing the car back. She's a kid. He can just beat her up and take the tape. If he's such a badass that was able to steal cars, you'd think he wouldn't have a problem with beating up his little sister. Right, and stealing a little cassette tape. You can't, you can't have it both ways, Christmas movie. He's got a heart of gold, okay, Mark? <laughs> All right. And a, and a chop shop full of cars. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they uh, they end up finding Santa Claus. He shows up. They go out in the street, and they see his sleigh is just like parked in the middle of the street. Yep. So, and he's delivering the presents, the little girl decides she wants to get a closer look and climbs up into the sleigh, and then her brother climbs up after her, and they get stuck inside. Yeah. How are you How are you feeling at this point, Mark? I'm like, where are the other people in this town? Like, there's no one out at all, like, walking her dog or noticing these kids running around with a sleigh that's, like, floating above the ground. And then that's the point where I'm like, all right, thinking about this way too much, just turn off my brain, just enjoy the movie. But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> You you have to like this movie introduces these huge concepts and then goes yeah okay whatever and moves right. right on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Aubrey, uh, how do you feel about Santa's sleigh just floating in the middle of the street? I thought that was stupid. <laughs> At least at the end, he's like, "All right, I got to get out of here before somebody else sees me." <laughs> yeah, but then he just like flies away himself. <laughs> oh God. So they're stuck in the back, and Santa gets back in the sleigh and flies off. And is Santa Claus is Kurt Russell. Yes. What How are you feeling about Kurt Russell as Santa Claus, Aubrey? I thought it was really dumb. Oh, what? All I could picture was Goldie Hawn being, like, super proud of him. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> Mark. I thought it was awesome. I Suddenly, I want a Santa Claus in the MCU. You know, I know he's already uh, the living planet, but... That Santa Claus outfit was kind of dope. I'm like, I kind of want to see him like with a couple of candy cane baseball bats and just beating ass in the MCU. <laughs> I thought he was great in this movie. Like, he seemed like he knew exactly what kind of movie he was in. He was having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. I thought he was fucking awesome in the movie. <laughs> I guess it's a lonely island for me, though, huh? 
No, no. He was the best thing about this movie. If you take Kurt Russell out of this movie, there is no reason to watch this movie at all. Exactly. So, so the kids are on the sleigh. You know, they surprise. The girl is cold. <laughs> this is like so contrived. She's like, oh, I'm cold. Maybe there's a blanket in Santa's bag. And then uh, the, the bag flies away. And then, um, well, first she asks Santa for a blanket and she scares the shit out of him. So the, everything goes crazy and the sleigh crashes. <laughs> yep. I will say the uh, the reindeer effects were actually pretty cool. Like, I, I kind of look for, like, really shitty special effects in these low-budget movies. <laughs> those reindeer, they, those look pretty good. That was like Jurassic Park-level reindeers. I'm like, oh, shit. There's a little money behind yeah. this movie. Thankfully, it wasn't Jurassic World 2 or they would have sold the reindeer at auction for, like, <laughs> pennies on the dollar. That's the but, next one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so then uh, Santa loses his hat and his bag and his sleigh's messed up and the reindeer are gone. So the kids have to have to help him out and find him. Yeah, yeah. They land in the streets of Chicago. Which may or may not be downtown Toronto. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely is. So how did you feel about Chicago being in the movie, Mark? You love Chicago. I do love Chicago. And it was funny. Uh, I went to see Widows uh, a couple of nights ago. And that movie also takes place in Chicago. And when I watched the movie, I'm like, yeah, that is definitely fucking Chicago. There is no... There's no mistake in that at all. They filmed on the streets and not like the fancy streets, the real streets. <laughs> so then, so with that in mind, I see them crash land in Chicago and I'm like, really? Really? Where's, where, number one, where's everybody? Where, where are the people at? There's no one in the streets. Everyone is, everyone is inside of this one bar. It was Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Yeah. No one is shopping, going crazy, driving down the street. There's no cars. That's fine. Whatever. My brain's turned off. I don't care at this point. I thought it was kind of cool. We get a Massachusetts and we get a Chicago in one Christmas right. movie. We got all of Mark's life in there. So they head into a bar and then um, Santa does this thing that he does almost through the whole movie where he knows everyone's name yep. <laughs> and everything that they wanted for Christmas ever and everything about their life, which I thought was was fun, like the first like five times. But it did get a little old towards the end. So I thought it was cool. There was one uh, girl that was in a movie for like a, a quick second, one of the the ladies that was sitting at the restaurant who was like about to call the cops because she thought it might be like an Amber Alert type of incident. Yeah. And um, her name is uh, Lauren Collins. She was big on Degrassi back when, uh, back in the day. Yeah. Degrassi, the next generation. So I was trying to figure out how I knew, knew her. Where you her from? Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as I saw her, I'm like, holy shit, it's Paige. Oh, this movie. Uh, suddenly the movie got 50% better because she was in it. I'm like, all right, I can't wait to see like what she does, how she factors into the story. I mean, I'm all psyched, rubbing my hands together, and that was it. She had like two lines, and then you'd never hear from her again. So, A, I was pissed. B, that proved that they filmed this shit in, in Canada. <laughs> oh, God. So, they uh, are trying to get somebody to give them a ride to where the reindeer are, but they can't, so they end up stealing a car. <laughs> right. Luckily, the kid knows how to steal cars well yeah so there you go plot contract <laughs> <laughs> aubrey how did you feel about santa claus stealing a car um i don't really care <laughs> i so checked out of this movie I'm like jeez, uh, what other stupid lame thing can santa do that makes this movie seem great and funny and ridiculous and and scandalous oh just wait oh yeah there's there's yeah <laughs> They get caught by the cops. Uh, the little girl <laughs> finds the reindeer. They get caught by the police. The only two police working in Chicago that night. That night, right. And one of them is Winston from uh, The New Girl. So if you're a New Girl fan, you know, you know who Winston is. <laughs> and uh, Santa gets put in jail. <laughs> <laughs> now, and the, uh, and, and, uh, the kid, uh, the boy Teddy, winds up. Oh, they find a sack. They find a sack of toys. The girl goes into the toy, into the toy bag, and then the boy gets kidnapped by these three guys in a park. That's with right, the sack gang of toys. members. Yeah, quote unquote gang members. <laughs> For no the reason. Mo the most intimidating gang members since uh, the motocross gangs in Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> so then she crawls through the giant bag of presents yep. into like a fold in reality. <laughs> <laughs> again one of these giant concepts they don't ever explain or talk about ever again nope it but just happens she <laughs> flies through inner space and comes out in santa's workshop where right. she meets elves 
who mm-hmm. are little bad CG. <laughs> I didn't think they were that bad. No, for the budget of this movie, no. But yeah. like I I I didn't like this. Obviously, they're not going to use like little people because <laughs> it's not like 1935. Right. There could have been something they could have done other than like cutesy kitty uh, elves like this. I don't know. It could have been something they did. I don't know. Yeah. See, that, that whole thing is just for the little kids, for the little, little kids. You know what I mean? Like when one of them is doing the floss dance. Oh, God. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, OK, now I know who this movie is made for. <laughs> It felt like it took a turn to be too kitty with that. I don't know. Aubrey, how did you feel about these CG elves that showed up? <laughs> I thought they were they were stupid and I didn't like so I had subtitles on and it would be like speaking elvish and like that's not elvish. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Where's the ring? <laughs> yeah. This Where's is Mordor? Not true. This is not this is not true. <laughs> So I just got pissed off and annoyed. I also like um, there was the scene where he's in the restaurant and Santa was like speaking different languages to other people that annoyed me, too. I just got really annoyed. Aww. But I did like how one guy was like, I speak English, you asshole. No. <laughs> like, how oh, that is actually really good. Mm, so I don't know. So, so, uh, so Santa's in jail. And this is probably my favorite part of the entire movie. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He starts talking to the inmates. And I'm like, holy shit, is that the E Street Band? I was just going to say, <laughs> thankfully, everyone from the E Street Band except Bruce Springsteen was arrested that night. <laughs> Did Bruce sell him out? I <laughs> think so. <laughs> What's that movie? That's the movie I want to see. <laughs> the E Street Band gets framed for a crime that Bruce Springsteen commits. That's right. Hey, you know whose name is on the top of the bill, and it's not the E Street Band. <laughs> Stop trying to relive those glory days, guys. So Santa decides to uh, give the E Street Band members uh, instruments, and then we get a nice little musical number where Kurt Russell gets to relive his uh, Elvis the miniseries days (laughs) (laughs) and do like a musical song, which I thought was fucking hysterical. I thought it was great. I also really enjoyed this, but this is where I could see Aubrey was ready to turn the TV (laughs) off. Yeah, this particular scene was just really lame. I think that was my problem was I found it lame to begin with, and then this scene happened, and I was like, Jesus, who is writing this movie? It's for, it's for the children, Aubrey. <laughs> it's like Wu-Tang. That's right. It's for the children. <laughs> I I really liked that part, too. <laughs> I was dying when uh, Extreme Botoxed E Street Band showed up. <laughs> It's like, oh, is that Quasimodo? Oh, no, it's that guy that wears the bandana, but he's been Botoxed to death. <laughs> he's hanging out in fucking jail. So, um, yeah, so they break the elves, break Santa out of jail. They're able to get his hat back and they fix up his sleigh and they're able to finish Christmas with seconds to spare with like a second to spare. Right. Because he goes they have to deliver with the last present to this girl in Mexico. And he, he's eating a cookie, and she's there, and she, she, turn, she, she turns around, and he's gone. And he ate that cookie, like, mm-hmm. which I thought was really funny. And there you go. They saved Christmas. Santa drops him off at home and gives him a hat. He gives him his magic hat, which he told him he needed to be able to do all the magic that he does. Right. But then the kid's like, don't you need that? He goes, nah, not really. <laughs> You're like, like what? What? Even the kid's like, so what was the point of all this? <laughs> He's just like, taps his nose. You're like, Wait, what? <laughs> hey, well, fucker, I got kidnapped in Chicago. You could have brought me home anytime. I know. He almost got thrown in a furnace. <laughs> and Santa was just like, oh, oh well. You know, like, gotta learn somehow. That's right. I guess you won't steal any more cars then, kid. Yeah. <laughs> They go inside. Their present from Santa was the house was decorated like their dad used to. Their mom comes home. Everybody's happy. And he gets to see his dad in a magical tree ornament. Right. And his dad tells him he's proud of him. Because, oh, that was part of the thing. His sister found out that the older brother had actually written Santa a letter and asked to see his dad one more time. And he got to. And then Star Wipe, the end. <laughs> So I loved this movie. <laughs> I thought it was great in the grand tradition of like terrible mid to low budget family kids movies like Never Ending Story 2 
or you know something like that. No. <laughs> but, uh, or not definitely not part three with Jack Black. But um, what did you give it on a scale of zero to five, Aubrey? Probably like a three. It wasn't the worst movie I've watched. You are such a good, uh, like, easy grader, Aubrey. <laughs> Seriously. Just with the whole thing, like, this movie sucks, fuck this movie. Well, I'll give it a three. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, like, the worst Christmas movie I've seen. I didn't, like, despise it. I probably won't watch it again. It wasn't the fucking movie that we watched last year, that's for sure. Uh, what oh, did we watch last year? Was Santa, it, uh, Santa with Muscles. No, 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 it was uh, um, oh the the Rap City Kids, Rap City yes. Street Kids, yes. Yeah. yes, it was no Rap City Street Kids. What what is Rap City Street Kids? Nothing. Yeah, it was deplorable. I can't believe that was an actual movie. <laughs> so I mean, I wasn't sitting there wondering how this was an actual movie. It was just one of those really cheesy Christmas movies that I don't really enjoy in the first place. Yikes. Well, we're striking out with suggestions for Aubrey and holiday themed movies between this and Halloween. So Die Hard it is. <laughs> Mark Ellis. <laughs> what did you think? Uh yeah, there's a billion of these movies made every year. Usually they're on a Hallmark channel. Uh but Yes, like uh Nissa Agul from Arrow is Snow Bride one and two. <laughs> I was gonna ask if that's a real thing, but I'm pretty sure it is. It is. I watched both of them because she's smoking out. Wow. And they're really fucking bad. <laughs> they look like they were shot on location in one guy's house. Nice. So yeah, so it's this it's that type of movie. It's that level of entertainment, but with a bigger budget and an awesome performance by Kurt Russell. So right there it gets a I'll give it a you know, because it took place in it took place in uh, Massachusetts and Chicago, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four out of five. A four? Yeah. Wow. I wanted to give it a okay. three point five, but uh Kurt Russell plus the setting. Plus, uh, a special shout out to Paige from Degrassi. So, yeah, I'll give it a four. Shout out to Goldie Hawn. You're right. I think she just came back from the same Botox doctor as the E Street Band. <laughs> she's, in, she's in a cell right next to him. <laughs> Mrs. Claus, why aren't you moving your face? <laughs> she plays uh, Mrs. Claus. She shows up for like five seconds at the end. But Yeah, and her, yeah, son... And her son is in it, too. Her right. son is the dad. The only oh, person really? that's missing is Kate. Yep. Oh, they couldn't have squeezed her in somewhere. She could have been the they could kick that Degrassi lady out and had her call the cops. <laughs> oh, that's a good I'm idea. She wasn't in it. Yeah. No, she's too busy marrying rock stars and having babies. Yeah. Well, well, I don't think this was good. <laughs> I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. I loved it for what it is. I loved everything about it. I could watch this with my son. I don't think my daughter would be too interested. Or I think Jen would probably make fun of me if we watched it. But I could watch this with my quote unquote family. I, I really liked it, but I, I don't foresee myself ever watching it again. No, no. I probably would have said 2.75, but I'm going to bump it up to three strictly because Kurt Russell is literally like carries the entire movie on his shoulders. Yep. And it's worth watching at least once just for his awesome performance as Santa. So I am going with a three out of five. So that is the Christmas Chronicle on netflix i think you should check it out aubrey does not mark does so if you do shoot us a tweet or a message let us know what you thought but now it's time for some recommendations aubrey the year is winding down what have you got for the listeners out there um i've been watching atypical on netflix i can't remember if i talked about this last time or not no but uh, yeah i've been i've been watching atypical it's really good it's about a kid with autism and just kind of like his coming of age story it's nice. It's I think the actor the actor doesn't have autism, and I think that he does a really good job at portraying it. So I haven't gotten too much into it. I'm like towards the end of season one, but it's really good. So I think everybody should um, should watch it. Where is it available? Is it on Netflix? It is. It's a Netflix original. Nice. I thought it sounded familiar. Yeah. Awesome. What about you, Mark Ellis? Uh, I want to recommend if you have Facebook, then uh, you are in luck because Facebook sure. Watch has Firefly, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Angel all streaming for free. So if you always wanted to watch Firefly, wonder what the big deal was, you don't have to get the DVDs, you don't have to get Netflix, just go to Facebook Watch, and there you go, all of the seasons. So uh, yeah, get some Joss Whedon in your life. And uh, also, uh, coming up this or coming up next week starts the three-part Elseworlds story for the CW shows, uh, Flash, Arrow, Supergirl. 
And uh, I've been looking at the pictures from this Superman in the black costume, uh, Batwoman, backdoor pilot. Um, I'm all for it. So Elseworlds three night special starts this week. Watch that. Awesome. Well, Facebook Watch, Mark Ellis, also has the amazing Tom Brady documentary series, Tom vs. Time. Right. That that came out last year, right? Right, right, right. And it's great. Legitimately, it's great. I loved it. So, <laughs> But I will suggest that you go check out SoWizardPodcast.com, where you can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks, and so much more. SoWizardPodcast.com. You can listen to our podcast every week on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, or just about any podcatching app under the sun. Don't forget to give us a five-star review on iTunes. It certainly helps out the show. Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Podcast, where for a small monetary donation every month, you can get at least one f- extra episode of the show. Uh, let's see. Last month, we reviewed Bohemian Rhapsody and then did a second Patreon exclusive where we watched The Happening. This month, it's December, so it's going to be hard to do even one, but we're going to get in there and do the sequel. See one of the most popular episodes of this podcast ever. We're going to watch Twilight New Moon. <laughs> no one asked for this at all. No. <laughs> no, they didn't. But we're going to we're going to do it. I, I already I, started watching it, and let me just tell you, it's it's more <laughs> painful. I was like, how did I not choose this movie instead? Well. I was all in, and then Mark was like, oh, it's two and a half hours long. I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. It's bad. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah, if you uh, become a Patreon, you can hear that exclusive episode this month. And then next month, we're going to do Bumblebee. Uh, we're going to review that exclusively for Patreon. So, cool stuff coming up there, and you can get involved by going to patreon.com backslash Podcast. Let me plug a few things. I was a guest on Cult 45, the movie podcast. And together we all watched Rocky IV and talked about that, which, as you know, from last week is the best Rocky movie ever made. Um, I totally disagree with that, but go ahead. Take Mark to the zoo. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling a bum? I call you a bum. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was great. I had a great time. So definitely check that out on their show. And uh, I will suggest, hey, why not get caught up on Voltron with season eight dropping very soon? I'm going to keep banging that drum. It's one of the best shows on television. So check out Voltron Legendary Defender on Netflix because the more people that watch it, the more chance there is that we'll get a sequel series with vehicle Voltron who will finally be redeemed. (laughs) Nope. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Well, next week on our show, we're going to be talking about Marvel's big week. As we're going to be seeing new trailers for Captain Marvel, hopefully Avengers 4, and hopefully the Avengers video games will have lots to discuss. But this has been episode 226 of the So Wizard Podcast. I've been your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-host, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Ho, ho, ho. Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> And the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Uh, everybody have a good week, Wakanda forever. We'll see you next week. Good journey.